Hi, my name is Laura Warburton and I'm so excited that I'm talking with you today. I'm going to teach you about the caucus system. It's a beautiful system that we have in Utah for electing our officials. Are you ready to learn something new? You ready to learn something that's going to empower you and give you a voice? I hope so. I'm going to give you the tools right now. Now there's going to be some words that I use that you don't quite understand and that's okay. There's going to be a handout that you can download from this site that will help you understand those terms. Also, in the spirit of cooperation, I'm going to include some information about the Democratic Party. I highly recommend that you look up their information and you go to whatever party you belong to uh, and verify how they run their caucus system. But in March, in 2012, there's going to be a caucus and I want you there. So let's do this, okay? So we have a unique way of electing officials in Utah. We're the only ones in the entire country that are left doing it the way we do. It's grassroots at its finest. And it's called the caucus convention primary system. This is how it works. So, are you feeling frustrated? I know most of my friends are, and I know there was a time I was really frustrated too because I didn't feel like I had a say over anything. I mean, do you really feel like that you have a say in federal politics? How about state politics? How about county? How about city? You know, most of the people feel just like you. They feel like they just don't have a say. And even though we have emails and we've got social media and we feel like we can get our voices out there, it's not really creating the change that you really want. Well, I'm going to show you today how you can create the change that you really want through the caucus system. So I know, caucus is a funny word, isn't it? So what does it mean? You know what? It's just a meeting. That's what it is. A caucus is a meeting. And in this case, it's a, a political meeting in a precinct. And so what's a precinct? A precinct is just a group of your neighbors. Your county clerks draw the lines and pretty soon you have a group of you that are in the same party, the voting party, and that is a precinct. And what this does is it gives you an opportunity to be in a small group. That's called grassroots so that every person in this state has a say in politics. Your voice does matter. You don't even know it, but it really does. There will be a caucus in your neighborhood. It might be in a church, it might be in a, a home, it might be at a school, but you will have a caucus. So let's look at what happens at a caucus. As a Republican, I'm gonna walk you through what happens in a Republican caucus. Now, Democrats have a caucus and all parties in Utah have a caucus. Again, I want you to go look up their information so you can make sure that, that it's correct for you. Um, so who is admitted? Anybody can come to a caucus. Anybody. Uh, if you want to have a voice, have, you want to talk, you want to vote, um, you want to be elected to a position, then you have to be a registered Republican. Okay. So. Are you seeing why it might be important to be affiliated? I know a lot of people don't like to be affiliated, but in order to have your voice the most powerful that it can be, you need to affiliate with a party. That does not mean that you have to agree 100% with everybody. I'm gonna tell you a secret. I don't even agree with my husband 100% of the time. I'm not sure how in the world I would be able to agree with my politician 100% of the time. The point is, is that you have a group of like-minded people and as an affiliated member of the party, then you can come into the caucus and you can vote and you can be elected to positions and pretty soon you're going to see just how important it is to get elected to a position. So let's go over this, okay? So the meetings all start at 7 and they're ran by a caucus host who has been trained. So these meetings are going to be orderly, friendly, and polite. Yes, I just did say that in connection with the political meeting, but I promise you that they're going to be polite and orderly. So first there's going to be a prayer, then the Pledge of Allegiance is going to be given, then the party platform is going to be read, and it might be discussed a little bit, and then the, the, you'll elect precinct officers and then delegates. How does somebody get elected? You have to be nominated, or you can nominate yourself. It's that simple. So after you're nominated, um, what you're going to do is you're going to give a brief description in front of the group about yourself. Don't worry, no teleprompters needed. It's just quick and easy about who you are and what you want to do and why you want to do it. Um, and then everybody votes and it's done by secret ballot. So 
you don't have to worry about anybody knowing if you didn't really want Uncle Joe to be a precinct officer. You're going to be okay. And that's a caucus, folks. That's how it works. And whether you've won or you just voted on somebody to win, at least you've been a, an important part of the process. And as I explained to you further about the different jobs and what can be done, you're going to see why you've just participated in a very meaningful way and that your voice does matter. Okay, so precinct officers, you've got a chair. They help set up the caucus and then they run the caucus. You've got the vice chair who d helps the chair and takes over the duties in case the chair can't make it that night. Um, you've got a secretary and we all love good secretaries. They're invaluable. They keep detailed records of the meetings. And then you've got your treasurer who keeps track of the money. Uh, now not all precincts do this the same. Again, check with your local leadership. So, um, now don't panic. Any of these positions you'll have training for. And with a little effort, you'll make a difference. And with a little more effort, you'll rock your neighborhood. Let's go over something, because right now you're thinking, well, how does this really make a difference? As you are a precinct officer, you're gonna have an opportunity to work with your local legislators. And what happens when you work with somebody? You build trust. And as you build trust, the doors start opening. And that's how it works. And what happens if you have an issue? Do you suppose that you can call your legislator and he'll listen to you because you put so much time into the party for him and everybody else? He's a servant, he understands. And he will take your phone call, or she will take your phone call. That's how it works, folks. Okay, let's talk about a delegate. What is a delegate? You know, kind of a funny word too. But we all know that a delegate represents somebody. So in this case, a delegate represents the neighborhood, your neighborhood. This is grassroots. Every precinct has a delegate, has sometimes several delegates. That means everyone has a voice. So whether you're a delegate or whether you've chosen your delegate, you'll know the delegate, you have a voice. So we're going to find out what a delegate does because it's pretty exciting. Okay, so let's talk about the upcoming election. There are many people that want to be a governor. There are several people in the Republican Party that want to be governor. Only one can go on the ballot in the general election. How do they decide? Who gets to go? The delegates decide. So we've got the delegate form of representation in the caucus system, and we have a primary form. And in a, in a delegate form, then the, the candidates come to the delegates. They only have a few delegates to talk to, although those delegates represent everybody in the state, every single person. But in a primary, the, the candidates have to reach so many people that they are, there's no way that they can meet with every single precinct in the state. And so people have to rely on sound bites and TV and media in order to represent you know, who this person really is. But in a delegate situation, you talk to the candidate. You ask some questions. We're going to find out more about that in a minute. There's two type of delegates. There is state delegates and county delegates. The state delegates choose the federal um, candidates and then also statewide elections like for the, for the governor and then for like, let's say, attorney general. And then you've got the county delegates who choose the state house and the state senate and also the county officials. So that's a little more close to home too. And you know, both are extremely important. They serve a two year term and they have two conventions that they're going to attend. First the nominating convention and then the organizing convention. That's the basics. So you've been nominated and elected as your precinct delegate. Now what do you do? This is where it really gets fun. Your job is to figure out everything there is to know about the candidate or candidates. How do you do that? Well, I've in that handout I mentioned earlier, I put some links on there so that you can go find out facts because facts are important. Okay? But your job is to find out about that. Now, what's going to happen is you're not going to have to go very hard and you're going to have to try very hard to do that because the candidates are going to come after you. They're going to have meetings, they're going to have breakfasts, you name it. They're going to do anything they can to get in front of you. And they should. They need your vote. You're going to be able to talk to them one-on-one -on -one about the issues of your precinct and your neighborhood. And that's what you want to do. So 
that is the beauty of the caucus system, is that one-on-one -on -one that you get with each candidate that does not happen in a primary. I want to share with you my story. About two years ago, I was getting kind of fed up with some things that were happening in our community. And I started going to meetings and, and getting involved, and I found that, mm, that there needed to be some change. About that same time, the caucus was going to take place. I wasn't sure if I wanted to affiliate with the Republican Party. I wasn't positive. I had some strong feelings. I'm a very independent person. But I gave it a lot of thought, and I thought, what is the best way for me to get something done? And then I, that's when I learned and when I thought about that I don't have to agree with everybody all the time. And I thought, okay, this is the best thing for me to do. And so I went. And when I went, I ran for county delegate, and I won. That was the first time I was a county delegate. And I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I was a little nervous about the whole thing. And I had somebody come up to me and say, Laura, we want to get said and such into office. And I thought to myself, I don't even know if I like this person. I don't even know who this person is. I'm going to have to do some research. So I walked out of that meeting that night a little nervous, wondering what I was supposed to do. But then I went to work, and I got to know the candidates. And I researched on them, and I went to the meetings, and I listened to them, and I asked them tough questions in public. And then I talked to my neighbors, and I asked them what they thought. And they raise their concerns because I'm their delegate, so I need to talk to them too, right? It's not just about me. It's about us. So I did. I went and asked their, I asked questions for, for them. And it was wonderful. I got to know these candidates one-on-one. -on -one. And when I started to decide who I was leaning towards, I started to email the other delegates and kind of find out how they were feeling, if they had found anything different. And uh, when I finally made my choice, and I had my ducks in a row, um, I sent an email out to all the delegates outlining why I was going to vote for this one particular person. Um, and he won. Do you think possibly I had some influence on that? I absolutely did. And it was wonderful. What happened to me during that process was that I had to get out of my armchair politician seat. See, I was one of those people that I thought I knew everything. I'd read the emails, read the news, watch things on the computer. But what I found out in that process was that these candidates are real people. And they're good people. I'm very fortunate. I have a wonderful group of people that I work for. And so that face-to-face, human-to-human contact guarantees us a much better elected official. They know they have to answer to me. They know they are going to have to answer to you. You deserve that voice. You deserve that power. Because it's supposed to be an everyday person. Not supposed to be someone that's special or more educated than somebody else. Just someone who's willing to do the work. Someone who's willing to go and find out who these people are, look at their records, talk to them, be unbiased, look at all, everything, and represent your precinct. I'd like you to do that. All right, so let's move on. Now you've done your homework. Now you know what you, who you want to vote for. Now it's time for convention. So we're going to go to the nominating convention. It's a fun day. It really is. It's going to be a long day, so count on it, about eight hours. You get there around 7.30 or 8, get credentialed. Um, that means they make sure that you're supposed to be there. And then you get to go in, and you get there's booths set up everywhere, and all the candidates are, are there, and they want you to come talk to them. After you've done your roaming around 10 o'clock, the convention starts. And then the delegate, or excuse me, the candidates will actually address the delegates one more time, and then you vote. And then the candidate with 60% or more votes wins, thus avoiding a primary. And primaries are costly. The state pays for them, but that means you and I pay for them because it comes out of our tax dollars. There you've done it. Your voice matters. Your vote counted. Good job. So. I hope you have a better understanding of the caucus system, and I hope you understand the value 
of the grassroots system that we have in Utah. And I hope that you'll understand that you can affiliate and not have to agree 100% of the time. But if you affiliate and become a Republican, then you can have that vote and that voice. So I want you to attend your caucus. And if I could, I'd crawl right through this and ask you eye to eye, will you please attend your caucus? On March 15th, the Republicans will be holding their caucus at 7 o'clock in your neighborhood. On March 13th, the Democrats will be holding their caucus. Now, on this website, you can find out where your caucus is. I want you to look it up, and I want you to go, and I want you to be a voice. And even if you don't get elected or you choose not to be elected, just being there and electing someone as your representative will give you a voice. Thank you for watching and you have a great day.